What up, Freedom fans? Jonathan and Virgil here, back with you. And we're gonna talk today about why is it that in freediving, we never train? We never train? <laughs> oh, you're, you're getting into like those, like, what, what do you mean why in freediving we never train? Like we, like people never go line diving, they never train. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I was just like, wait a, wait a second. What? All right, so it's really interesting to me that in all other kinds of sports out there, and in some cases, the sole aspect of the sport is to train, right? Uh, CrossFit, for example, is literally training only. There is no actual sport or activity that like you win at unless you get like all the way to the games, but you're just training. Right. That's the only thing you do. And in everything else, like archery, you go and you shoot your targets, right? In uh, running, you if you're going to do a lar large event, you go and train. But for spearfishing, for some reason, people just seem to forget that there is a actual way to train to be a better spear fisherman. Oh yeah, a lot of people like would agree with me. It can be way more exciting sure. than you know potentially what the people would think of game day is always exciting. Right? right yeah, <laughs> diving on the line. You know, yep. like however. Um, there are so many benefits to training, right? First off, you can do it in a shorter amount of time. It doesn't require, you know, like the whole, like going out and spearing all day, right? Mm -hmm. You can do it in a short session. We do training sessions here for mm -hmm. what, only three hours or so. Right. But what you can get is you can get, develop A, deep equalization, mm -hmm. B, you're gonna start developing bottom time and you're gonna start strengthening your legs. You're not gonna get leg burn. You're not gonna wear out as quickly, right, right. right? And so being able to hit, let's say, some deeper depths, for example, when I started to go past 150 feet, mm -hmm. right? Well, hunting in 100 feet became a cinch, right. you know? For, the, for when I first, after I took level two, you know, because I was able to hit 132 feet, I didn't mean I needed to hunt in 132 right. feet, but that 60 to 70 foot depth, I'm hanging out there now. Yeah, and now you become way more confident in yes. that 70, 75, because you know you've been to 130, mm -hmm. right? And now that you've been even deeper, right, that, that depth of hunt gets deeper as well, right? right? And so it's something that we kind of want to change the culture of our spear fishermen, right? When you go out and spearfish and you're using you know, the one day, maybe a month, or maybe a quarter that you have to go out and shoot those fish and dive and the conditions are perfect and everything is great and right, don't you wanna have everything in your corner and everything lined up and ready to go? Using the day that you can spearfish to train and get better, in my opinion, is a waste of your time, right? Um, if I have you know, a baseball game, I don't wanna be swinging my bat for the first time that month when I step up to the plate and I only get two or three bats per game, right? right. Uh, if you've only got two or three chances to shoot fish, does the first trigger pull of that month wanna be on a fish that you may or may not hit? Right? No, you probably want to shoot fish targets and you want to have made a dive that deep and maybe stay down there a little longer. So you want to practice and train. So we've got some stuff to actually help us train, right? The biggest thing on the table uh, is our float. Um, so this kind of has uh, a lot of use under it right now. Um, and basically the float, the idea here is it gives you a stable platform to dive up and down on uh, right, with a line and some sort of weight at the bottom. And what this is doing is giving you a reference point so that if you're doing deeper dives, you're not just kind of swimming off into the distance, right? You've got something to have there to watch out for. Right. Yeah. And yeah. also, if you actually ever feel uncomfortable, what you do, you, you can actually grab onto the line, stop kicking all together, pull yourself up the line in order to save oxygen. You know, yeah. for example, get a cramp, anything yeah. of that nature. Yeah. It's actually a great safety tool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's definitely big enough to where it's you're not going to pull it down. It's going to pull you up right. for sure. Um, so with this float uh, and sit line system that we use all the time for uh, line diving, right? It's what we swim up and down the line or pull up and down the line, as uh, Virgil mentioned. Um, as you start going deeper, right? As you start progressing deeper than that 
140 meter mark or 132 mark, uh, you start implementing other pieces of equipment. So this right here is called a lanyard. Uh, and so what this does is this clips off to the line and this actually goes around your wrist. And so it attaches you to the line. Um, now, why is that important? Well, when you start doing deeper dives, right, deeper than that 130 uh, foot mark, you are absolutely in what's called sink phase, where you are not kicking or anything and you're just simply gliding down, right? Yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. It is a wonderful feeling, yeah. One of my favorite parts about diving for sure. Um, but with that, a lot of people, like myself included, I close my eyes during sink phase. There's a lot to think about going on internally, right? With equalizations and things like that. So I don't want to have to worry about where I am at in like kind of association with the line. So this lanyard helps give me some feedback on my arm as to where I'm at to the line. Do you, have you used the lanyard before? I have actually. And one okay. of the things that I think is most important is, especially when we're training out here, every once in a while there's a little bit of current. Mm -hmm. And you know, not necessarily enough to where you know, the, our lines are bent and you're not gonna actually be doing a lot of super deep dives. Mm -hmm. But when there is that little bit of current and it's pulling you away from the line, mm -hmm. once you're in sync phase, you've got this thing that's, you know, if your eyes are closed, you're not gonna be drifting away from the line. Right. It's gonna keep you right there in a close proximity. Once again, more for a safety, like right. it keeps you much more safe. Yeah, absolutely. And also it lets the uh, diver on the surface kind of feel uh, this carabiner running down the line. You can feel that on the surface which is like another cool safety aspect. Um, it's definitely different, right? Getting used to wearing a lanyard while diving on the line uh, is something that's a little bit different. If you guys ever do wanna try one and you just don't wanna spend the money to buy one, you can always come out and dive with us. We've got a few that we can use, uh, so you can try them out in different things and see how they feel. It's definitely a cool uh, feeling, especially as you start diving a little bit deeper. So, another piece of equipment, dive watch. Let's talk about that. Oh yeah, very important. Okay. Um, well, once you know, you learn in level one um, when, you, when we talk about breathe up, um, surface intervals. Mm -hmm. Well, the deeper you go, things start to change because we have this wonderful thing called nitrogen, okay. right? And so, past seventy feet, you have you do as a free diver you do risk getting bent. Okay. And it's not necessarily just like scuba bent, mm -hmm. but it actually can be a lot worse okay. in the end. And so what you're gonna need is you're gonna want the uh, your surface timer. You're gonna want to know that, hey, and you're gonna learn this in level two as well, mm -hmm. that, hey, I need to be up, for example, if I'm diving 66 feet, I need to be up for twice as long on the surface breathing up as my previous dive, right? Okay. Then as you progress, you go past 80 feet, you have to realize that you need to be up on the surface for eight minutes to let everything sort of even out, yeah. right? So this is a very essential tool. Not to mention you're gonna be able to gauge your depth and also your dive time. So mm -hmm. we talk a lot about timing and style, right? right? And so we're talking at one meter per second. Mm -hmm. One meter per second is your dive, the amount of time you wanna dive. Why do we have this? Not only to keep you uh, moving at a, a proper pace, but we have it for safety. So that way, your safety diver on top knows exactly how long your dive time is gonna be, right? right? Especially when you're going to the deeper depths where they can't see you anymore. Right, right? you disappear, all of a sudden, oh, he's, he's gone, <laughs> but you know that he's making a 40 meter dive, 40 right. seconds down, 40 seconds up, 80 seconds. And right. then like in level two, we talk about meeting at depth, mm -hmm. escorting somebody through the blackout right. zone, right? When they're gonna be, have the least amount of oxygen, the most hypoxic. Right. Um, and w you're gonna need to know when you need to meet them. So even as a safety, you're gonna be looking at your timer mm -hmm. saying, okay, all right, it's time for me to go down. Then you're right. gonna dive down and, and be And make there. your depth. And, and something that a lot of you may ask is, well, wait a minute, that kind of breaks that rule in level one of one diver up, one diver down. Well, the reason why that's totally okay is the dive that the safety is making is only to 10 meters or 33 feet. And at this point, you're now with a group of individuals who are 33 foot dives are, can be done in their sleep, right? So very, very easy. Right. And we're also not going any longer than about 30 to 45 seconds uh, on the safety divers dive time. Now, again, when you have divers who are doing minute and a half, 
minute 45, two minute dives on the regular, a 30 to 45 second dive is very, very attainable and not at all pushing them towards any type of hypoxic event. So that's why we kind of make that small exception to the rule of one buddy up, one buddy down, because you're basically assisting them right. through that blackout zone. So I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page with that. But yeah, cannot stress enough when you start doing uh, deeper dives or even on the shallow dives, knowing your bottom times mm -hmm. for me personally is everything. Now what I try to make sure I have people do is not check it on the dive, right? You don't wanna be swimming down and pulling out and looking at your watch on the descent, right? Um, or even the ascent as you're coming back. Uh, leave it be, let it be on your wrist, and don't pay attention to it until you get back to the surface and you've finished your safety protocol. Um, what that'll do is let your mind be like free from the numbers, right? I don't want you guys worried about what's happening depth-wise from your watch perspective or time perspective on the dive, right? Now, in we, when we do get deeper, right. we can set alarms, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I really like doing that. I set my alarm, my first alarm goes off at 22 meters. Uh, what that does for me is I need to take my biggest last mouth fill, something you'll learn about in level two. Uh, basically, the air that I use to continue to equalize as I get down deeper, and then I have another alarm that goes off at 35 meters, and that tells me to drop my arm and just get completely relaxed into my sink phase. Uh, and then other people have different alarms for different things, right? Do you use any alarms on your uh, Yeah, I set an alarm at about uh, 50 meters just okay. to give me a little, like, you're doing great. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting okay. deep, and, okay. uh, you know, that, that sort of gives me a reference point as to mm. I can then gauge, you know, how I'm feeling um, because 50, you know, f after 50 meters, the dive is going to become a little bit more technical. Yeah. I need to know that at, at that point I will make the decision. All right, I'm Am I going to progress deeper? I'm gonna or pro right. Yeah, I'm going to cool. progress or I'm going to come up and then reevaluate. Cool. Sounds good. So yeah, using the watches, using the alarms is definitely a great thing to do. If you haven't already seen Eric and I's uh, review on the Garmin watch, we'll put a link up uh, and then also in the description below. So you can check out that watch specifically. Uh, that's the watch that I currently wear and I absolutely love it. Um, so training for spear fishing, right? We talked uh, a little bit about the training free diving aspect. Well, why does line diving benefit our spear fishermen, right? Um, you talked and mentioned that uh, one of your buddies, one of our buddies, Errol, uh, always wants to go out and line dive, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but none of his spear fishing buddies want to. They always want to spear fish. No, they just want, they want the excitement of the hunt, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Unfortunately, uh, like for most people, they you know we don't have a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to go and do the most fun thing or the most what's the most exciting. Right. However. We're never going to get those maximum results. We're not going to max out our potential, right? right? Everybody, I think, has potential to become a better diver. Absolutely. Um, however, you know, we're, a lot of people are going to be stuck with this 60 to 70, maybe 80 foot right. range. You know, that's one of the things Errol says. He goes, you know, see those guys, they're, never, they're great spear fishermen, but they'll never get past, uh, they'll never get to 100 feet. Right. Why? Because they just don't want to train. Right. Well, you start training, and I can, t I can guarantee you yes. The results are night and day between like when I went used to go to the Bahamas, mm -hmm. like, even after taking level one, I was hitting 66 feet, still a little uncomfortable. My bottom time wasn't great. Okay. I was safe. Right. I was right. very safe. Right. However, I took level two. I started hitting 132 feet in level two. And then I started training. For example, mm -hmm. Errol would take boats out. We take as Florida, at Florida free divers, we take boats out. Mm -hmm. And when you start hitting those depths regularly, develop inward flexibility. Your mm -hmm. body starts to adapt. Your equalization becomes easier. You become calmer, right? right? Now 80 feet, that's nothing, right? right? Yeah. Then you're, oh wait, you, you know those deep wrecks out here mm -hmm. off, off of our shores, you're able to go down and go to the bottom of the right. wreck, go look and under sit. the ship. Yes. Yeah, and wait, you sit and wait, and that extra bottom time allows fish to come to you. Mm -hmm. You're not giving off any of that nervous energy. Oh my gosh, I gotta go down. Right. Wait, I gotta shoot it right now because right. I gotta get back up there. Right. 
you lay on the bottom and a lot of our friends and a lot of our um, clients, they love mutton snappers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like mutton snappers are that like sort of level two. <laughs> level, They're elusive, like, man. Yeah, yeah, that level two yes. fish. You know, yes. people go to the Bahamas, they, they take level one, they start shooting hogfish mm -hmm. and, you know, right. some other things and maybe get the occasional mutton. But right. the good ones, they know they taste good, right? right. Yeah, yeah, So the, you're, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to lay on the bottom. You're going to have to kick up sand. You're going to have mm -hmm. to wait. Because right. these fish, they're nosy. They'll come yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. But, you know. But they're patient. Right. They're and patient and curious, which is an odd combination, right? Exactly. Um, but, yeah, absolutely correct. When you sit on the bottom and you can actually start to interact with the fish, that turns on a whole new level of spearfishing that you probably have just been doing the dive bomb and hope you get lucky uh, technique, right? right? Uh, which works, which absolutely works. I've used it for many years. But, uh, but years ago, I learned that instead of just hoping I get lucky, I can use some other aspects, right? I can train, and then when I come to game day, right, or my spearfishing day, I can actually take the time to get to the bottom and wait for that fish. And there he is calling right now. All right, so if you can't actually get to the ocean, right, you can't use the float, you can't use the line, and uh, you're not deep enough yet to maybe warrant the lanyard, um, but you still want to train. You still want to make game day the best day, right? And so there are ways that we can do that actually out of the ocean, right? Some of those ways we still need to use the water, so we'll still use a pool, mm -hmm. and other ways we can actually use the gym or other techniques. So what is anaerobic? workouts basically an anaerobic workout is where you are burning oxygen at a rate or so much faster like and you can't exactly take it into oh, like compensate okay. right okay so what it's sort of doing is it's almost simulating what a breath hold dive would be like yeah, right you're not breathing right and you're obviously burning oxygen right so this basically you're breathing mm -hmm. but it's oxygen's not getting to your muscles fast, fast enough. enough so okay. you're gonna feel that similar burn right and okay. what you can do the way you can do this is through interval training mm -hmm. what I I like to do is I like to do, um, for example, I've, I've got bad knees, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be out sprinting. A lot of people do sprint workouts. Mm -hmm. I actually go to the elliptical in okay. the gym and okay. I look kind of funny doing it, <laughs> but um, I'll do a minute sprint, okay. right? And then a minute sort of re relaxation. Okay. Then I'll do two minute sprint, really get that burn, really focus on mm -hmm. my legs. And then a two minute rest, mm -hmm. two minute sprint, two minute rest, wow. two minute sprint, two minute rest, one minute sprint one minute rest. Okay. So I like to sort a of- big workout, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it only takes 10 minutes, 10, 15 wow, minutes. That's true. That's so true. it goes by fast, it's painful, yeah. it goes by fast. But when you go into the ocean, your legs, you're the leg burn. I mean, right. you feel the power. Right, right, absolutely. And I think another thing that uh, to warrant in the, uh, maybe not so much in the gym, but at right. home, you can also do uh, breath holds, right? right. Uh, making sure that if you're in the water, you have a properly trained safety. But if you're not in the water, you can do uh, apnea walks. You can do regular breath holds on the couch or in bed. Um, there's a ton of different apps out there, so we're not gonna go into the, the details of that. Right. But there's two primary things that you can work on, CO2 and oxygen deprivation, right? Um, the only thing I wanna touch on is the safety aspect of those two. You never wanna do the two in the same day. So you don't wanna do O2 tables and CO2 tables in the same day. You wanna make them separate. Uh, and the other point that I wanna make for safety aspect is if you're gonna do a regular workout, like a run or a sprint or elliptical or anything, don't do CO2 tables on top of that. Treat those tables as its own workout, right? Mm. Um, so let's talk about the pool a little bit. Yeah. So let's say you, uh, you know, you're not a huge fan of the gym, uh, but you really like the pool and you have a pool that's accessible to you. Uh, swimming is a fantastic workout and a great way to not have to get out into the ocean and line dive, but still prep yourself for your spearfishing uh, trips, right? Um, so some of the things we've actually been able to train here recently, uh, and I've been lucky enough to in the past have trained with some pretty um, good divers in the pool. And so doing things like swimming, but swimming specifically for free diving is uh, something that I think is very, very important. And we've seen crazy results from that, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, we did a workout uh, two days ago mm -hmm. where uh, we did our, our warm up, right, with our, in the pool. And then we did 25 meter sprints underwater with like little short uh, fins. And you sprint, then the other sprint person sprints to you. And then you sprint 
and sprint and sprint and sprint. So you're doing about a 15 to 20 second sprint underwater with about a 25 to 35 second rest. And you're doing that, I think it was five times, right? That right. We did, or six times that we yeah. did those sprints. And then you would rest for about five minutes and then you would do it again. So we did that three times. That was our entire workout, kind of a short workout, but it was still uh, got the legs burning, got the CO2 kicking. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a great way to get us prepped for that leg burn of those deep dives or pulling fish up off the bottom, right? Oh, yeah. And that's just one very small aspect of the pool training. There's a ton of other things that you can do in the pool uh, to be safe. Always having that uh, properly trained buddy with you in the pool if you're ever in the uh, in the water but tons of stuff that we can do tons of stuff that we covered guys thank you so much for uh, watching our video if you did find value in this content please be sure to give us a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't already subscribed please make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you guys in the next one Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did have any questions about any of the products that you saw, please be sure to leave a comment below. And you can always find all the stuff that we have and talk about on our website, which at flfreedivers.com or floridafreedivers.com. And uh, give us a shout. If you got any questions, give us a call.